True to his character, Army Colonel Ralph Puckett didn't want a big deal made about his actions in Korea. Though I understand that your first response to us hosting this event was to ask, why all the fuss? <laughs> why all the fuss? Can't they just mail it to me? I was going to make a joke about the post office, but I decided not to do that. <laughs> Colonel Puckett, after 70 years, rather than mail it to you, I would have walked it to you. You know, your lifetime of service to our nation, as I think, uh, deserves a little bit of fuss. A little bit of fuss. Just that simple gesture shows the humility that many say Army Colonel Ralph Puckett exudes. Puckett recently became one of the most decorated service members in U.S. military history after becoming President Joe Biden's first recipient of the Medal of Honor. Puckett was fresh out of West Point, as the president described him during the ceremony, when he led a group of 51 U.S. and nine South Korean soldiers against the Chinese military. Puckett, who was a first lieutenant at the time, exposed himself and risked his life to figure out where the enemy was attacking from and eventually helped the U.S. take control of Hill 205. We were in North Korea at the time, about 20 miles south of the Yalu, as far north as the U.S. 8th Army or the 8th Army had gotten during the war. The 8th Army was getting re ready to, to start its end the war campaign against the Chinese, who we knew had come into the war at that time, come in with great strength. But Puckett's sacrifice goes beyond just leading the group of troops. And, uh, he obviously was wounded again during the fight, um, was attempted to be dragged off the battlefield by one of his men. They got him behind cover, and uh, he was still conscious and said, just leave me here, and you guys withdraw the rest of the way. And, they disobeyed his order and carried him out of the combat situation. During his celebratory proceedings, the Medal of Honor recipient had a special message. More than 200 years, citizens, soldiers, and others have volunteered and fought and died to protect that freedom and maintain it for us. While we have many enemies of this country today, who want to see us fall, there's no greater enemy, in my opinion, than ourselves. We've divided ourselves into tribes and have closed our ears to all who would not think that we would do what we needed to do. Our enemies outside our country are aiding and abetting the dissension within our ranks. They're watching with satisfaction as they see us destroying ourselves. Our politicians in Congress have together sworn an oath to protect our democracy and have put their self-interest ahead of their sworn, sworn oath. Our country was not created to be the states of America, but rather we were named United States of America. It's my hope that all Americans will come to think about that and adapt that to their own thought process, to their own belief system. Our country depends on you, you, me. What you do every day and how you live. Without you, we will not maintain our freedom. It depends on us. For Defense News Weekly, I'm Jesse Karangu.